Hello Aquarius and welcome to your horoscope for March of 2020 where this month we are coming in with Mercury retrograde but this is the month that Mercury also goes out of retrograde so we have forward motion. This is such a beautiful time. Jupiter's out of hiding and we get to move forward Aquarius. So I love this energy for you this month. If you take a look at the chart, you see that it's very heavy towards the left side of the chart, which tells me that even though the planets are going to continue to move and get more down here as we continue these forecasts for this month, this is still a peak of personal independence for you, which means you're taking action. You're making these moves to increase your own happiness. What do you need? What do you want to be happy, Aquarius? It's your responsibility this month to continue to take the actions towards that. Things are not necessarily just falling in. You're needing to get yourself into the alignment. So take that pretty seriously, which I think as Saturn makes a move into your sign this month, just temporarily before it does a two-year stint coming up in December, you do get serious. You are a bit more focused on it at that time as well as to what makes you happy and, and where you would like to go with certain things. So I think that's a wonderful energy for you to use. Now, this month we'll also have the sun moving into the energy of Aries, so we'll welcome in a new season together. If you're in the northern hemisphere, we're moving into our spring equinox. We begin things. New life is available for us. If you're one of our southern friends, you're going to be moving into your autumn, and it may be time for things to shift into a little bit more quiet. So whichever season you're going to be celebrating this month, I support you, and it is just time for a new season. So let's jump in here and talk about what's going on this month. First and foremost, we've got Mercury who's still retrograde. And he's retrograde in the energy of Pisces at this point. But Mercury is going to move that retrograde path and come back into your sign, into the energy of Aquarius. Now, Mercury is much more happy in your sign because you're very intellectual. There's more words actual words available here. Mercury down in Pisces doesn't have access to all the words. He has all the feels. So here you could find yourself doing a lot of talking, a lot of being busy, a lot of asserting yourself or having conversations. And maybe you're even going back over your own originality your own eccentricity, your own what makes you special. How do you think about things and express things that is very individual to you? Because that has value. That absolutely has value. Now, another thing I think of is that Mercury rules over not only your fifth house energies here, but also your Virgo energies here in the eighth house. So at some point, maybe you've got something going on with children you're having to go back to in some way, shape, or form, and your presence is required. You know, spring break could be something that's going on. Or perhaps in this retrograde, you're looking back over debt or you're looking back over bringing freedom to debt or something like that. And we're also going to have a moon up there, so that will bring your attention up there as well. Either way, Aquarius, a Mercury retrograde in your sign gives you an opportunity to review you, review, reconnect, reevaluate, rethink, whatever you need to do, bring the focus back to you because you're in charge of making some moves this month, okay? We've also got Venus moving out of the energy of Aries and moving into the energy of Taurus. So coming home, lighting up this fourth house space for you. Venus is comfortable over here. She's a smallest benefic planet, so she's trying to bring good things, harmony to this area. Traveling with the energy of Uranus, and they're going to come into a conjunction with each other. This may be something shocking that comes from your home zone. Maybe all of a sudden you are ready to move and you get the idea and you're like, oh, I've been ready to move, but I haven't known the place yet. And now you get an idea. You get a vision that comes to you and it comes out of nowhere, maybe even. This could also be, I think, whenever Venus comes home into the fourth house, you maybe just want to beautify your space a little bit. You know, my walls are really bright green right now, and before they were chakra purple. And that happened when Venus rolled through my fourth house. So you could be wanting to make some kind of home improvement, maybe even your psychological foundations. You're finding more grace and more gentleness with yourself, right? There's more value that could be happening in that area for you. But you'll certainly see some good things, some tenderness maybe even in this home zone for you. Now, on the ninth, we're going to have that moon I was talking about, and it's going to be a full moon in the energy of Virgo. So lighting up this eighth house space for you. 
The full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or an adjustment needs to be made. Now up here in the eighth house, First of all, whatever adjustments need to be made, you're going to do it like a Virgo. So you're not going to take on the whole thing at once, you're just going to do little steps. You're going to eat that cake just a little bite at a time, right? So, and Virgo is going to show you the patience and persistence to stick with that, not to do it all today. Because sometimes in the eighth house, we're dealing with really big things. We're dealing with things that we are afraid of. And maybe, especially, we're still in a retrograde, at least in the beginning part of the day, you might be afraid to step into something over here that needs your action, right? This is death, debt, taxes, um, maybe something you need counseling over, joint resources, um, joint connections, intimacy. You're vulnerable in this particular energy. So what could be happening here is, let me just tell you, one foot in front of the other. You've got everything you need to take the actions over here to give you freedom. Now, Mercury will come out of retrograde this day as well, but he's going to hover right here in your sign for a minute. So, as he comes back out of that retrograde and stations direct, that can be a day that's a little bit complicated, plus we've got a moon going. So if you feel a little bit all over the place on that day, give yourself some grace. A stationing planet can bring a lot of challenge. It's easier to actually be in the retrograde or out of it, but when it's changing direction, that gets a little bit complicated. All right, on the 16th, though, Mercury is full steam forward, moving back into the energy of Pisces over here. So now your second house becomes lit. It's been powerful, just like your 12th house is loaded and powerful over here. Now your second house has been powerful with Neptune, who is standing sturdy and loyal over here. The sun beaming bright, so you've had motivation around finances. It's probably been a really lovely financial peak, right? Or you've been making a lot of decisions about what you want to do with your money. And now Mercury is back on the table, so we can have conversation. We can make some decisions, sign some documentation, get ready to make that move. Maybe even do some research about where you would like to take your skills and your talents or where you'd like to make money from. Oh, perhaps you have had a surprise adjustment to your home, and that's how you're going to make money. You're going to make money from home in some way, shape, or form, or a value from home comes into your life at this particular point. But trust your gut here. Trust your intuition. These are shining bright, saying that finances are powerful, but you've also got to use what you've had in the rest of the month to make this profound for yourself, okay? On the 20th, we've got the sun moving into the energy of Aries, which means we're going to welcome in not only Aries season, but the spring equinox. So we're going to start something new here. Now, this lights up your third house. What I love about this for you, Aquarius, is that you're a sign of the intellect. You're an air sign. This brings new, motivated, willing, ready to shine thinking, communication, decision making to your table, and you are in motion. This is an action energy. You're in Aries. It's a cardinal sign. So you're beginning a new way of thinking. You're beginning a new way of studying, of communicating, new relationships with your siblings maybe even, right? New relationships with your neighbors. You're writing that book. You're doing whatever you're doing, but the sun has got you motivated to communicate. If you've had to deal with things over here, maybe you've got some documentation you need to be filling out over here, but you're going to see that this is a high time where you're quite busy with communications and some of them could do with your money and your house, okay? Also on the 20th, we've got this aspect that I love that gives me an indicator about your money as well. Jupiter and Mars here together in Capricorn, which Capricorn tells us it's grounded, right? Whatever decisions you're going to make here, they are grounded, right? But Jupiter and Mars coming together, this is a courageous energy and it says yes initiate, go for it, push forward. So you see, we've got full forward motion permission this month. So we're not thinking and gathering information anymore. Now we are in action. So on the 20th, these guys are going to say, let's go for this. Let's try this. I don't know. This could be something I was just thinking of and maybe it doesn't even make sense, but let's, let's go for it. Let's leap. And I love that for you because what it could mean is you're bringing something out of hiding. You've been researching it. You've been working on it. You've been digging in your soul to say what's right for me. And as these two work together, Jupiter tells me, as Sagittarius rules your 11th house in the general, a friend may be getting involved in some kind of communication you're doing, right? And they're helping you bring it forward. Maybe there's new study 
or new ideas that come from a group setting and they're involved in making your career blossom in some way, shape, or form. But at this point in the month, on the 20th, take action on what you have seen back there. Even if it's that you feel like you need to take the next two weeks to just meditate and cleanse or bring some things to an ending. Whatever it is you feel like you need to do, take action on it that day. It's a go for it day that ultimately is going to benefit you as these energies continue to come around. This is about your happiness, Aquarius, okay? On the 21st, Saturn's going to move out of the energy of Capricorn and into the energy of Aquarius, so right into your first house. Now, Saturn is one of your co-rulers, so he's just as happy here as he was in the energy of Capricorn. But what happens as Saturn moves into your first house is you've got to get serious about you, right? Now, this is just a little taste test of what's coming for the next two years. So between March and July, Saturn's going to work here, and then it'll retrograde, and then it'll come back for two years into your sign. But right here in March, you're starting to get a little bit more serious about what you do in the world. You're starting to get a little bit more serious about how you regard yourself personally, how you show yourself up in the outside world. What's your identity? You're going to get pretty serious about these particular energies. And one of the things I think of is because your 12th house is ruled by Capricorn, also ruled by Saturn. As Saturn moves into your first house Aquarius, what I think is you're wanting to represent yourself as more of a spiritual being at this point in your life. You're moving a little bit away from that just being human and acknowledging the soul, acknowledging the spirit in the things that you do, acknowledging your spiritual connection to those around you. Now at the end of the month, Mars is going to move down here and join up with Saturn as well. So you are motivated to take yourself out there. You're motivated to take the lessons you have learned here in the 12th house, spiritual fitness, spiritual awakenings, research you've done, whatever you've done here, now it gets to become public and you get to raise your identity. You take it to the next level and you're in action as these two come down here, okay? But before we end the month, we're going to also have a new moon down in your third house. The sun and the moon are together, which means anything is possible. So at a new moon, we're going to plant our seeds of intention to give something a fresh start. Begin something anew. Now down here in the third house, this is a thinking house, but it is ruled by Aries energy. So this is a moon where you are not just thinking about the manifestation. You are in action. You are moving. You are taking action on this. You're actively taking that class and signing up for it and getting into it over the next four weeks. You are actively writing that book. You are actively engaging in documentation. You are actively committing to engage with your siblings or something like that. But whatever it is, the information process that's happening here is not just about gathering. It is about being in action to put a new beginning to something. So a new moon and a new beginning sign is just all the delicious for you. Now, I think it's going to be an interesting month. Please put in the comment sections down below how you're manifesting because how we change in our identities is really such an individual thing in the transition part of it. So I would love to hear what's happening for you. And if you are, if you're like me, if you're that Aquarius who gets Venus down in the fourth house and you need to paint everything, uh, let me know that in the comment section down below as well. All right, Aquarius, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you so much, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye, friends.